Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're doing good, guys. This is Mon Show number six. So let's get started. Today we're going to discuss、um, something I actually、um, discussed with my daughter.、Uh, my daughter is two years and a half. I actually had a very nice conversation with her. I、uh, sat down with her and、uh, I discussed life.、Uh, life. So, discuss life with her, and I told her never, ever, ever, ever quit. The reason why is because nothing beats hard work first. I was telling her that nothing beats hard work first, and second,、uh, never ever quit because nobody, nobody, nobody will give it to you. Nobody will come and tell you, oh, Mo, here's your,、uh, here's your dream, manifest it.、Uh, no, it doesn't work that way, and it will never happen. So,、uh, as I discussed, I discussed this point、uh, a while ago in、uh, one of mo- my、uh, motivational、uh, videos that I used to do. So, today,、uh, again, I discussed that with my daughter. Like I said, my daughter is two years and a half, and she, she, we're having a smart, intelligent conversation. And she told me, Papa, why do we have to work hard? I tell her, that's exactly what I told her. I told her, because nobody's going to give it to you, nobody's going to hand you. Uh, 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 the opportunity, nobody's gonna hand you the, 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 the work, nobody's gonna hand you as a gift. I might, I might, but I would rather not because I want you to build the, the, the character, I want you to build the strength, I want you to build you, yourself, I want you to build yourself so you can move, you can hustle, you can work hard because nothing beats hard work. Again, nothing beats hard work. Work nothing, trust me. So,、uh, today I wanted to discuss、uh, something about、uh, hard work again. Hard work,、um, Eric Thomas, one of the newer motivational speakers that I used to I'm listening to.、Uh, I used to listen uh, to uh, Les Brown,、uh, Les Brown Jr., and he's also one of my favorite, Eric Thomas. So, one of the stories he、uh, discussed. Uh, he was actually he got famous because of that story.、Um, the story goes like that. Let me tell you a story.、Uh, it goes like that.、Uh, a guru uh, invited uh, one of his students to,、uh, to come with him. And no, actually, actually, the student c o m e to the guru and asked him, I want to be as rich as you. The guru is a billionaire, and uh, the, 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 the student is uh, just a kid, uh, just starting up life. Uh, so basically, he asked the guru, I want to be like you. I want to be as rich as you. I want to be as powerful as you. So he told him, Okay, tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning, you show up at the beach.、Uh, the student was surprised. He's like, Tomorrow, 7 o'clock, beach.、Uh, anyway, so basically, he showed up at the beach, suited up with a suit, tie, everything, you know? So, so he goes. And,、uh, and, uh, and the guru was there waiting for him. He's like, okay. So he told him, come in. So he came in. They go through the water, they go through the ocean.、Uh, they go through, and, and the student is with suit. So basically, they go three feet in, and, uh, and uh, the student is like, surprised. He's like, what's going on here? I thought this is an interview, and、uh, this is it, you know? But no, it wasn't. So the guru told them, Come in, come in. So the more they went deeper into the water,、uh, five feet, ten feet, anyway. So the more they went into the water, deeper, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the student wanted to, like, what is going on here? I, I, I'm, I'm going to go back. So the guru again reminded him to come back and, you know, so continue on. So the funny thing about this story is when the student arrived to the point that He's actually reaching up for the water. The water is right here, and he's reaching up to, to, to breathe to breathe out of that water so he can get the oxygen, he can live uh, 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 to the point. So the guru, he held his head and he pushed him down. He pushed him down the water. And、uh, the, the, the student was like, Get me out, get me out. He cannot breathe, he's gonna die. So basically, the, 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 the guru still pushed him down, pushed him down until. He, he almost, almost, almost he passed out. So the student c o m e out and he's suffocating. He's like、uh, grabbing, like he's reaching for, for, for the, 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 the breath that he lost. He's reaching for some oxygen. 
So he's like, oh, this guy's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm this. I'm done. Da, da, da. Anyway, so after he calmed down a bit, uh, the guru took him to the beach, back to the beach, out of that water. And he told him, you see what happened there? You see what happened there? This is how you succeed. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, don't get it. He's like, if you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe at that moment, then you will be successful. Again, if you can, if you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, as much as you want to survive at that moment, as much as you suffocate and you're reaching for oxygen, you're reaching to, to you're gonna die. As much as you can breathe, then you will be successful. Then you will be successful. That's the whole story and the, 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 the summary of the whole story. So basically you see, nothing comes easy. That's what I try to, to tell my daughter. Nothing comes easy. You have to hustle, you have to work hard, you have to push, push, push and when you push it's even gonna go against you you're gonna go step you're gonna you're gonna go a few steps back you have to push and when life goes and kicks your butt you have to kick back you have to punch back what makes you stop what makes you stop the fight what life is gonna win life is not gonna win you go out there and you punch back you fight back you kill back that's what you have to do that's what you have to do and that's how your heart is work and nothing like i said nothing comes easy you have to do it and voila this is the story of today let's go into marketing i'll see you after the after the commercials we'll get back to you Welcome back, Legends, Mo Show number six. Let's do this. One of my favorite books of all time, Ogilvy on advertising. I will read, I would like to read an episode if you allow me your permission, please. I would like to read something that caught my attention. As soon as I opened that, you know, it's actually like the first few pages. It's right there. It's like page number nine. So let me read that. Hear me out. Okay, so pretend you started work this morning in my agency. He's saying, Mr. Ogilvy, he's saying a story about you, so you can imagine. You can work your imagination and you can see where he comes from. So pretend you started work this morning in my agency and that you have dropped by my office to ask for advice. I will start with some generalities about how to go about your work he's going to tell you exactly what to do what to work with that in later chapters i will give you more specific advice on producing advertisements for magazines newspapers television and radio i ask you to forgive me for oversimplifying some complicated subject because remember uh, uh the kiss uh the kiss idea keep it super simple i don't like the original idea the original thing which is keep it simple stupid no i keep it super simple just not to insult anybody out there so let me let's continue on so i ask you to forgive me for oversimplifying some complicated subjects and for the dogmatism of my style uh of my of my style the dogmatism of brave brevity what are uh, we are both in a hurry we are busy even in the 80s when he wrote that book i don't even know when did he write that book it's dope. reprinted in 2010 the this edition published in 2007 and he wrote it in 1988 okay so let's continue on so, at the time, 1988, we are at 2018 now, it's the same thing, nothing changes, nothing, trust me. So, 
the first thing I have to say is that you may not realize the magnitude of difference between one advertisement and another, says John Kaplis, the doyen, the doyen of director of direct response copywriters. I was explaining, I, I actually mentioned that idea before. What is the difference between two? I'm, I'm gonna discuss that also again in another episode, but let me let me say it fast fast. What is the difference between two advertisement? You go online uh, or you read it, you see it in the newspaper. You go and you see that uh, uh, two, it, like two, you saw two advertisement in the newspaper or in the, in the, in the, uh, on the internet and they look exactly the same. But one has a copy and one has another copy. The, 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 the sales copy, we say. So, why would you rather buying this from this advertiser than this one? Why this copy um, caught your attention, uh, caught your, uh, your um, what a curiosity, uh, made you uh, get scared, uh, get, um, you get, like, grab your attention. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, and why the other didn't. That's what he's talking about now, and that's what I'm going to explain in the next episodes. The difference between two advertisements. I have seen one advertisement actually sell not twice as much, not three times as much, but 19 and a half times as much as the other. Both advertisements occupied the same space. Uh, both were in the same publication, the same as I explained. Both had photographic illustrations both had carefully written copies he didn't say different copies he said written copies the difference was that one used the right appeal and the other used the wrong appeal so basically it's either the copy or the illustration one has the right appeal one had the wrong appeal the wrong advertisement can actually reduce the sales of a product i am i uh, i am told that george hay brown at one time head of marketing research at Ford inserted advertisement in every other copy of the Reader's Digest. At the end of the year, the people who had not been exposed to the advertisement has bought more Fords than those who had. Did you just caught that? Did you catch that? Okay. At the end of the year, the people who had not been exposed to the advertisement of Mr. Uh, George Hay Brown in the f uh, as, as the marketing research in the market research of Ford at the end of the year now who had not been exposed to the advertiser had bought more Fords than those who had so like I said some advertisement works some advertisement doesn't so basically you should know and like I said in the next episodes I'll explain it more I'll elaborate on, on it so in another survey, it was found that uh, cons uh, consumption consumption of a certain brand of beer was lower among people who remembered its advertisement than those who did not. The brewer had spent millions of dollars on advertisement, which which unsold his beer. So basically, the advertisement was um, a negative to his product. I sometimes wonder if there is a tacit conspiracy among clients, media, and agencies to avoid putting advertisement to such acid tests. Everyone, everyone involved has a vested interest in pro prolonging the myth that all advertisement increase sales to some degree, but it doesn't. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. And that Sorry, uh, welcome back. Uh, sorry about uh, this technical uh, issue. Uh, so, as I said, um, that's what Mr. Uh, Ogilvy said in 1988. So it tells you there's bad advertisement. That's what he meant by bad advertisement and good advertisement. Why one advertisement will sell, not, uh, what he said, 19.5% more uh, than the other one. Uh, why would why would advertisement do that? And that's what I'm going to explain in the next episodes of the Mo Show. Uh, just want to let you know that uh, that there is good advertisement out there and there is bad advertisement. The same thing I said in episode one. There is, I, I marketers out there is just I, I don't understand. 
they don't know how to sell. Uh, they are trying to reach uh, customers that they are not interested in the product. They are trying to sell something that I am, they are trying to sell something to me which I'm not interested in. Um, it's stuff like that. So, uh, like I said, uh, we will, in the next episodes of uh, the Mo Show, we will explain that in much, much elaboration. Don't forget to subscribe to that Facebook group right here, okay? And uh, don't forget to, um, to subscribe to the YouTube channel right there. Like and subscribe. And if you want to comment, uh, any questions, any concerns, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, that's it for today. I'll see you later. And uh, thanks for attending the show, the Mo Show. Peace.